Hi and welcome to PMPLounge.com. This is Lounge Fever wherein we tackle your burning question. And the question for the day is extremely important, extremely useful and something which is a must for every PMP aspirant. What is the PMP formula cheat sheet? What all are the formulas, the mathematical formulas that you need to know? A PMP aspirant must know before attempting the PMP well there are 17 of them and these 17 are enough for you to to kind of answer all the questions that pertain to any mathematical calculations in the PMP exam so all the 17 formula you need to know to clear the PMP exam are part of this video so do check out the entire video and note down these formulas and practice questions based on these formulas so that you can easily answer the questions when they show up in the PMP exam so this is the cheat sheet this should ideally be part of your PMP brain dump all these formulas should be part of your PMP brain dump. If you don't know what a brain dump is or how to kind of create a PMP brain dump, which is uh, extremely helpful, which is extremely effective, I'll link to a video that we did earlier on PMP brain dump and you can go over and check that video out so that you can kind of create the best PMP brain dump possible. All right, let's get started. The number one formula is the communication channels. N is equals to the number of members in the team. So N into N minus one divided by two. This is the formula for communication channels. N should also include the project manager. Now this is important because some of the questions that you may see during your practice or even in the exam, it will ask you if you are the project manager of a team, and there are four other members in the team how many communication channels do you have and people tend to kind of put uh, the value four as n which is wrong because project manager should also be included in the value of n so the real value of n in terms of this question will be five not four so keep that in mind also include always include the project manager uh, is as the value of n the formula of course n into n minus 1 divided by 2 that is the number of communication channels schedule performance index which is also known as spi spi is equals to ev by pv ev is earned value pv is planned value now not only do you need to memorize this formula you should also be able to make out certain judgments based on the values that you get so if SPI is less than one, that means your project is behind schedule. If SPI is equals to one, that means your project is on schedule. If SPI is greater than one, that means you are ahead of schedule, which is a great news, right? So some of the questions in the exam won't want you to uh, calculate the value of SPI. They would rather give you a random number. Your SPI is 0.6 what is the state of your project and there will be four options of course the state of your project is that you are behind schedule so if you know the formula not just the formula but if you know the the, the what do you make out of that formula right what do you make out of the value that you get out of that formula when you basically apply that formula you will be able to answer these questions very very easily so sp is equals to ev by pv that is a formula to learn but also make sure you understand what the values stand for cpi is cost performance index and cpi is equals to ev by ac ev of course is equals to earned value and ac is equals to actual cost if this if this uh, applying this formula if you get a figure which is less than one which means your project is over budget if it is equals to one that means you're on budget and if it's the if the value of cpi is greater than one that means your project is under budget so there could be a question which says the cpi of your project is 1.6 what does that mean well that means 
1.6 is greater than 1 which means your project is under budget right let's move on all right scheduled variance sv is equals to ev minus pv ev is of course earn value pv is plan value if sv the value of sv if that is less than zero that means you're behind schedule if the value of sv is equals to zero that means you're on schedule and if the value of sv is greater than zero that means you're ahead of schedule so let's say there's a question that says your sv the value of uh, sv for your project is 0 0.8 what does that mean well 0 0.8 is of course greater than zero which means you're ahead of schedule great news go out party enjoy right and then there's cv cv stands for cost variance cv is equals to ev minus ac earn value and ac of course is actual cost if the value of cv for your project is less than zero that means you're over budget if is equal is equals to zero if the value of cv for your project is equals to zero that means you're on budget and if the value of cv is greater than zero that means you're within budget so what are the good news here well if your cv is equals to zero that means you're on budget that's a good news if your cv is greater than zero that means you're within budget that is also good news right the bad news that you have here in this situation is when your cv value is great is less than zero right so that means you're over budget so if there's a question in the exam that says cv is equals to zero for your project uh, how is your project doing well you're on budget you're doing great but then there could be certain questions which could give you multiple values right there could be a question that says there are three projects a b c and they can give you values of cv and sv for all three projects and they can you know give you certain values and then they can ask you according to you which of the project out of these three is doing the best and if you kind of understand these values and what they mean you can easily answer questions like that estimate at completion eac now there are several formulae for eac this one is if original is flop flawed right so eac if original is flawed that means eac is equals to ac plus etc actual cost and estimate to completion right so your estimate at completion the original one was flawed and that is why you are recalculating this right ac actual cost plus now the estimation that you have etc so you add that up to get your eac estimate at completion if the original estimate is based on wrong data or assumptions or circumstances have changed etc mentioned here is a new etc right so that's why it's important to understand which eac formula you're going to apply where you are going to apply this eac formula if the original was flawed next formula for eac is if the BAC remains same. BAC is budget at completion. So the budget at completion remains the same. What is your estimate at completion now? So that is equals to AC plus BAC minus EV. AC is actual cost. BAC is budget at completion and EV is earned value. So this variance is caused by a one-time event and is not likely to happen again. So there's a variance, right? The estimate at completion and the budget at completion if there's a variance that variance is caused by a one-time event now estimate at completion if cpi remains the same that means eac is equals to bac by cpi bac of course is budget at completion cpi is cost performance index and we have already seen a formula for cpi earlier in the slide right so if the cpi would remain the same till the end of the project that is the original estimation is not accurate so the original estimation that you came up with was not accurate and that is why cpi is going to remain the same for the rest of the project you can calculate your estimate at completion by dividing bac and cpi all right eac your estimate at completion completion if the substandard performance of your project continues 
then the formula is AC plus BAC minus EV divided by CPI into SPI. AC is actual cost, BAC is budgeted completion, EV is earned value, CPI cost performance index, and SPI is scheduled performance index. So you need to use this formula when the question gives you all the values, all the values that you see in this formula. If you have all these values in the question, you will apply this formula, but Otherwise, you are not likely to use this formula in the exam. So these were the formulas for EAC. Next up is two complete performance index, also known as TCPI. TCPI is equals to BAC minus EV divided by BAC minus AC. BAC budgeted completion, EV is earned value, AC is actual cost. The TCPI is basically remaining work divided by remaining funds the work that is pending and the funds the money that you have to achieve that work so that will give you the value of tcpi again if this value is less than one that means you're under budget bad news if it is equals to one that means you're on budget if it is greater than one if the value of tcpi is greater than one that means you're over budget all right moving on Estimate to completion, ETC, the formula is EAC minus AC. Estimate at completion and AC is actual cost. So this is estimate to completion. At any point in your project, if you want to kind of calculate what will be your estimate uh, to what is actually pending, right, to complete the project, that is the estimate uh, to completion value. Next is VAC, variance at completion. So at completion, what will be the variance? It was BAC minus EAC, that is budget at completion and estimate at completion. So if VAC is less than zero, that means you were under budget, the project was under budget. If it is equals to zero, that means your project was on budget. If VAC is greater than zero, that means your project was over budget, bad news. All right, aside those formulae aside, there's another formula for PERT estimation, which is O plus 4M plus P divided by 6. That is optimistic estimate, most likely estimate, and pessimistic estimate. So there are very simple, straightforward questions in the exam also that you are likely to see. At least one question which asks you the PERT estimation. All you need to do is apply this formula, the values will be uh, given in the question itself. So that's a very straightforward question. If this is part of your brain dump, if this formula is part of your brain dump, you can easily use this formula and solve that question. Standard deviation, so P minus O by six, that is again, optimistic estimate and pessimistic estimate. You're simply subtracting it and divide it by six to give you a standard deviation value. Float or Slack, of course, if you have uh, not read about Float or Slack, if you have not read about uh, the critical path method, CPM, this might sound a bit alien, but when you read it, come back to uh, this video and note this down. This needs to be a part of your uh, PMP brain dump. LS minus ES, which is late start and early start, and LF minus EF, which is late finish and early finish. If the value of this is equals to zero, that means this activity is on critical path. If the value is less than zero, that means this activity is behind schedule. So um, float or slack, like I said, if you are aware of uh, the, the, uh, uh, the critical path method CPM, then you will be able to make out what we are talking about here. If not, just note it down and make sure when you read about the critical critical path method you'll be able to make sense of these formulae so that is all that we had with this video hope you enjoyed it hope you have noted down all the 17 formulae that needs to be a part of your pmp brain dump these are the 17 formulae the end game the end all of the mathematical formulae that you must know in order to answer questions that pertain to anything mathematical uh, in the pmp exam so if you have any other questions 
feel free to comment them that question and we'll definitely answer it or make a video on it subscribe to this youtube channel if you haven't done so already and check us out on our social media facebook.com slash pmp lounge and twitter.com slash pmp lounge as always do check out the website pmp lounge.com your number one free resource for pmp and project management industry news thank you